to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Today's program is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. And I do want to let you know you can support the show with the Zelle app by, by sending a donation to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Thank you to Carl for doing that. Also, you can go to support.greatdetectives.net or by mail to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 159. 13, Boise, Idaho, 83715. You can also mail in a donation to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. And thank you to Beatrice for doing that. Uh, and you can become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time... For today's episode of Rocky Jordan, the original air date is July the 4th, 1951, and this one is The Lady from Tangiers. Now, starring George Raff, we bring you a world of adventure with Rocky Jordan. I'm Rocky Jordan. I run the Cafe Tambourine here in Cairo. They've got a saying out this way. He who has been frightened by a serpent fears the sight of a rope. I remember one piece of rope that had me squirming. It was around my neck. The Cafe Tambourine. Crowded with tourists, camel drivers, women, chiefs. Forgotten men down on their luck. The lonely and the lost. For this is Cairo, gateway to the ancient east, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Partially transcribed, tonight's Rocky Jordan story, The Lady from Tangiers. Hey, Rock. Yeah, what is it, Chris? Joe Spalvo's at the bar, wants one on the cuff. How is his back bill? Ooh, that long. Oh, let him have one more. Right. And Miss Addis' party wants another round. I'll be in the office. Yeah, that's the boss, Rocky Jordan. I'm Chris, I run the bar. I also handle most of the conversation. You know how bartenders are. Yeah, Rocky Jordan. Some guys in town will say he's got a cash register for a heart. I see the other side of him. You take that Chantel deal, for instance. That began when a tourist guide named Harubin turned up dead in an alley. A nice little guy, Rocky thought a lot of him. That night he went to Harubin's house, a heap of dried mud in old Cairo, to pay his respects. As he expected, he found Harubin's widow in tears. What he didn't expect to see was that classy-looking doll with the honey-colored hair. She turned away from the body, looked sympathetically at the widow, and left. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Rubin. Very sorry. You're done, babe. You're done, babe. In my book, he was the right guy. It is her fault. That French woman, the one who just left. It is all her fault. What has she got to do with it? She gave him money. He was helping her. I had a feeling Jordan Bay things would not go well. Oh, my husband. Here. Here, Mrs. Harubin. Fifty pounds. Jordan Bay. I just remembered. I owed it to him. He did me a big favor. A solemn alaka. Rocky left us staring down at that 50-pound note and he went outside. Up the street, he could see the girl as she moved through the glare of a lamppost. Her hair was full, her legs were long, and she walked in a slow, easy kind of way. So he quickened his pace and he caught up with her. Uh, excuse me. Oh. I saw you at Harubin's house. Mind if I walk along? 
well, I... I was a friend of his. I take it you were too. I knew him. He looks kind of lonely back there, doesn't he? The dead often look lonely. Sometimes so do the living. You, for instance. Excuse me, I must go now. Oh, just wait a minute, please. I'd like to talk to you. I do not have time. The name is Jordan. Rocky Jordan. I run a cafe here in town. Please excuse me, Mr. Jordan. We have nothing to talk about. I think we have. Reuben's death might be a good start. You know, it was a rope around his neck that did the job. I know. The police turned him up in an alley. There's nothing clear beyond that. Look, uh, there's a coffee house up the street. A cup would do you good. Well, uh, all right, Mr. Jordan. Why not? More coffee? No, no, thank you, Mr. Jordan. I got a first name, you know. I know. The Ruben's wife said he was working for you. Mr. Jordan, do you always concern yourself with other people's affairs? <laughs> Hardly ever. I learned a long time ago to mind my own business. Then I am afraid I do not understand your interest in Reuben. Let's put it this way. Seeing him back there, he looked like he needed a friend. No longer, Mr. Jordan. Well, for the living. I guess you're right. As a matter of fact, you look like you could use one yourself. Anyone can. How many true friends does one ever have? You shouldn't have any trouble. Nor should you, Mr. Jordan. Rocky. I think I'd better go. Wait a minute. You still haven't told me your name. Lorraine. Lorraine Chantel. Chantel. Hmm, sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, there was something in the Cairo Mail the other day. Fire in a cheap hotel over in the Citadel. Found a body. Amy Chantel. My husband. I'm sorry, I... I didn't know. I had not seen Emil in some time. We were separated. I was living in Tangier when a wire came asking me to meet him at Shepherd's here in Cairo. I came. I waited. He did not arrive. The next day I read of the fire. What about Haruban? Your friend Haruban knew my husband. After Emil's death, I naturally began to wonder what he had been doing lately. Why he had suddenly wired me and... Well, uh, Harubin was helping me to find out. And he got a rope around his neck for his trouble. You can bet that Harubin's death is tied in some way with your husband's. Yes, that is what the police seem to think. I spoke to Amy. Well, they kept on talking, and pretty soon it was kind of clear they were a team both interested in the same answers. And it was also kind of clear they were interested in each other. They spent the next several hours asking questions about Chantel and Harupa. The search took them through the Cairo the tourists seldom see. The dark, crooked streets, the haunts of the beggars, the blind, the thieves. The Cairo that Rocky also knows. Two o'clock the next morning, they wound up back at Lorraine's hotel with a whole lot of nothing. Rocky ankled back to the cafe, went upstairs... And that's when the phone rang. Yeah? Hello? Jordan? That's right. I have been trying to reach you all evening. Who is this? Jordan, it has come to my attention that you have been asking many questions about two men who died recently. What have I had? It is wise to leave the dead alone. If that's advice... I'm not interested. You should be. The last man who ignored my advice found himself in the river. I can swim. <laughs> With holes in your head, Mr. Jordan. I do not think so. The next day, Rocky was with Lorraine again, but he didn't tell her about the phone call. And that night, they wound up at the Ramesses Club to check with a girl Chantel once knew. Well, the floor show was on, and the featured act was fracturing the males. A wren with cold black hair was doing a specialty. 
Well, the kind of a dance that makes a guy feel like he's run on AC current instead of blood. minutes later, the doll was sitting with Lorraine and Rocky, and they were going over the same old questions. No, I'm sorry, Lorraine. I did not even know Emil was here in Cairo until I read of his death in the newspaper. It was such a shock. I was always fond of Emil. Yes, I know. Zarita, you ever hear of a man named Harubin? Harubin? No, I do not believe so. A guide? He was a friend of Emil? No, I do not know this man. He might have come around to see you a few days ago. Oh? Why would he have done that? To ask about Emil. No. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, my, my next number. I really must go. Of course. Goodbye, Lorraine. Mr. Jordan. So long. Rocky, what is the matter? Nothing. Come on. Let's get out of here. Well, I guess it was about 1 a.m. when they finally got back to Lorraine's hotel. It was a warm night. Rock had supper set up on the balcony. It was one of those desert nights full of meaning. The stars were as big as watermelons. The moon threw a big shine down on the Nile. The air was full of river sounds and the hotel orchestra playing it soft. Rocky cracked open a bottle of wine. They sat there for a while, not saying much. And then... You know, Lorraine... You haven't said much about Emil. Mm -hmm. What is there to say? Oh, I don't know. I thought you might say a little about what he was like, how you felt about him. He was my husband. I loved him. And what kept you apart all that time? Lorraine, I've got a feeling there's something hanging over us. Something you're not telling me. Emil was in prison, Rocky. In Alexandria. I see. He... He was a counterfeiter. I did not know his occupation when we married. Later, when I found out my husband, someone I loved, was a criminal, was going to prison. Never mind. None of my business. But I want to ask you something else. What are you going to do now? Uh, I mean, where are you going to live? How are you going to get along? I have not made definite plans yet, Rocky. I've got a suggestion. Lorraine. Shh. Rocky, there was a man watching us at the Ramsey's Club, was there not? I didn't think you saw. Tall, wearing a beret. He followed us when we left. He may even have followed us here. He may. Oh, there will be trouble. You will be hurt like her Ruben. It will be my fault. Oh, Rocky. Rocky, I do not want to bring any trouble on you. Lorraine. Oh, Rocky, there are things going on which we do not understand. There are things... Oh, you should not have. Rocky, I... Lorraine. No! Rocky, please go. But you... Please, please go. When will I see you again? I do not know. Tomorrow at the tambourine, about noon. Yes, yes. Now go, Rocky. Go. Well, Rocky decided to walk back to the tambourine. He had some thinking to do, and the fresh night air felt good. He was coming up the Sharia Bendar, going slow, when it happened. Ow. The rope came up from behind and wound around his throat, and then a couple of arms shoved him forward into a wall. And he could smell the garlic coming over his shoulder as a buster moved in close behind him. You do not heed warning, Jordan. You do not heed warning at all. How many times must you be told to stop looking for Emil Chantel? Looking for Chantel? Oh, oh, most certainly. Oh. Oh. Now you listen and listen well, Jordan. I'm not talking just to hear myself talk. Stop looking for Emile Chantel. Stop or you will never look for anything again. Oh, I seem to have held the rope too tightly. <laughs> no matter, Claude. Let him lay there for the dogs. Uh. 
When Rocky came to, he staggered to his feet, shook the cobwebs out of his brain, and headed down to police headquarters with a lot of questions on his mind. When he got to Captain Sam Sabaya's office, he found Lieutenant Greco there, settled comfortably in the captain's creaky chair. Well, Mr. Jordan, what is on your mind? A guy named Chantel. 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 I'll refresh your memory. He died in a hotel fire a week ago. Oh, yes, yes. An unfortunate affair. That depends. On what, Mr. Jordan? Whether he died or didn't. What do you mean? You jumped at that like a vulture going after a meatball, Lieutenant. What do you mean? Are you sure the body found in that hotel room was Chantel's? Of course. His wife identified him. How well did you know Emil Chantel, Mr. Jordan? I didn't. Of course. Naturally, you would not care to include an ex-convict among your acquaintances. Look, Greco. A guy made a mistake. So he paid for it. The way I feel about it, if a guy goes straight... But he did not. What do you mean? The day after Chantel's arrival here in Cairo, samples of his artwork went back into circulation. You're sure of that? Of course I am. I see. Well, you don't have to worry about him anymore, do you, Greco? He's dead now. Uh, yes, he's dead. Uh, that reminds me, Mr. Jordan. So is Harupin. He was working for you at the time of his death. Was he not? Where did you get that idea? You gave his widow 50 pounds. Do you deny it? Oh, that. For services rendered. What was he doing for you? Nothing. I gave her the money because I thought she could use it. Indeed. <laughs> I do not believe it. I don't care if you do or not. How about Chantel? What about him? I've got another 50 pounds that says he isn't dead. Want to take me up on it, Greco? Thanks. That's all I wanted to know. Well, Emile Chantel was alive and everyone was in the know but Lorraine herself. And the Rock went back to the tambourine, poured himself one, and did some thinking. He could tell the doll Emile was alive and say goodbye to her, or he could clam up. Lorraine didn't make his decision any easier when she showed up around noon the next day, wearing a blue silk dress and one of those French perfumes that kind of reach out and grab. Without wasting any time, he told her. Lorraine, Emil's alive. I know he is, Rocky. You what? I know he's alive. I... I knew it all along. What is this? Come on, Lorraine. Level it out. I'm not in the habit of making a play for women with husbands. The day after I read of Emil's death in the newspaper, I saw him in the Muski Bazaar. Before I could get to him, he disappeared into the crowd. So I knew he was alive, that he was in Cairo, and I hired Harubin to help me find him. You could have told me. No, Rocky, I could not. At first, I did not know who you were. I did not know you could be trusted. What about later? I could not tell you then. For another reason. For the same reason you got so angry when you found out my husband was alive. Rocky, we have been spending much time together. We have had certain feelings. Yeah, we're all right. That's ancient history. Forget it. Uh, of course. I am sorry, Rocky. Me too. Well, what do we do now? I don't know what you do, Lorraine, but I find your husband. But for why? Why should you wish to find him? You asked yourself why Amy was playing dead? Yes. And what answer did you get? No answer, Rocky. I do not understand. Well, then try this on for size. Amy was back in the counterfeiting up to his ears. He killed a guy in the hotel and made it look like he himself was dead. Why? So he could work free from the police. No, Rocky, no. Emil would not kill. He wouldn't, huh? You ask me, also murdered her Reuben because the poor devil was getting too close to some answers. No, Rocky. Emil is not a murderer. Everyone to his own opinion. Come on. I'll take you back to the hotel. Rocky and Lorraine took the trip back to Lorraine's hotel and kept the conversation down to nothing. 
whatever they were thinking, they kept to themselves. And then as they opened the door to Lorraine's apartment and went in... Close the door, close it! Emile! Emile Chantel, gun and all. I was wondering when you were going to show. Emile, you're bleeding. What a very nice way to meet my lovely wife after all these years. With a bullet in me. Who is this man? His name is Jordan. He's a friend. That's a mistake. I'm not a friend of yours, Chantel. Emile, please. Put the gun away. No, no, not yet, Lorraine. Are you suggesting we have business, Mr. Jordan? A little. Some squaring to do on the life of a guy named Harubin. Mr. Jordan believes you killed him, Emile. That is not so. Tell him it is not so. Of course it's not so. Why should I kill Harubin? You tell me. Also tell me why you started to run off those phony pound notes again. Two weeks out of jail and you've already bought a return ticket. No, no, that is not so. Now listen to me. Lorraine, I did not meet you as shepherd as I wire because... Because of a Turk named Gabek. He wears a beret and eats garlic sandwiches? Yes. He was in business with me. The plates I made of a man with him. He was clever enough not to use them while I was in prison. I was to join him again when I was released. The years, however, changed me. I no longer wanted the life I had with Gabek. With my release, he began to issue the counterfeit notes again. I went to him. I demanded if he do not stop, I would go to the police. He agreed. But instead, he sent one of his men after me. I've been running ever since. Oh, and me. Well, that's a lot of stories, Chantel. But there's still that guy who died in the hotel fire. The one who was supposed to be you. Yes, he, he was supposed to be me. Gabek's man made a mistake. I took advantage of it. Put my identification upon him. That's nice work. No, not nice. But I felt it necessary. If... If Garbeck thought I was dead, I would be free. But he saw me when I tried to contact Loen. He did... This... To me. But he did not catch me. No, Willie. I have too much to live for. You, Loen. Emil, you are weak. Please, sit down. It's nice. I, I have two tickets on a boat, which leaves for Natal in less than an hour. The arrangements are made. A, a friend will pick us up in a taxi. Amy, oh, I, I, I got him. The couch over here, Rocky. Oh, gently, gently, Rocky. Uh, he can use a doctor. We will get one on the boat. Then you're going. He is my husband. What about a little thing called love? I loved him once. Perhaps I can again. And he needs me. He needs me so. Rocky. Yeah, Lorraine. You were wrong about him. Well, wouldn't be the first time. He is not a killer. That's what he said. He did an evil thing once. But he paid for it. With years of his life. No, now things would be different. Yeah, he said that too. There's just one little problem. What is that? How do I know he's on the level? Or that you are? How do I know he didn't do those killings? Everything hasn't been on the up and up between us, you know. How do I know for sure this is another curveball? Yes, Rocky, I understand. You do not know for sure. Well, everything is in the open. We leave by boat for Natal in an hour. That gives you time to think. If you decide Emile is a liar and a killer, you can phone the police in time to apprehend him. And if I decide the other way? You can forget him and... and the last few days. This seems to be my day for decisions. Rocky. Yeah? Whichever you decide, I want you to know I will never, never forget you. Well, Rocky had a lot on his mind when he left the Chantels. He walked a dozen blocks thinking about it. Then he grabbed the cab, went back to the tambourine. But he never got inside. 
A tall gent from the beret was waiting at the side door, and with him was a wiry little guy with nervous eyes and hands two sizes too large. Mr. Jordan. Yeah, what can I do for you? We have never met. Except over the telephone and in a dark alley. I recognize the voice and the garlic. You do, Jordan. <laughs> you hear that, Claude? Yes, and I, Mr. Jordan, recognize blood when I see it. Blood? Observe the stain on your sleeve. Don't move, Jordan. Touch him, Claude. He is unarmed. Good. Now, if you will come with us, Jordan, we'll find a nice, quiet place where we can talk. Huh? Garbeck and Claude bundled Rocky into a big black sedan and headed for the river. Twenty minutes later, they were going along the river's edge, and Rocky could see the ships being loaded. One he knew was leaving soon for Natal. Then he was inside a warehouse, and the going got rough. Sit down, Jordan. Sit down. You may be here for some time. Yeah, I could have guessed that. Looks like a long night. It does not have to be. Where is Chantel? Chantel? Never heard of him. Where is Chantel? Like I said, I never... Perhaps I should attempt to persuade Jordan with this. No, Claude. Remember what happened to Harubin. Tugged a little too hard with that rope, didn't you, Claude? Unfortunately, yes. You know, Garbeck, you do well to get yourself another boy. This kid isn't too reliable. Look at the mess he made of that killing in Chantel's room. You... Seem to know a great deal about all this, don't you? Pretty careless of you, Claude. Killing the wrong man. Yeah, it's a stupid mistake. But what is past is past. At the moment, I am interested in finding Emile Chantel. And I told you I... Be sensible, Jordan. Be sensible. You want the girl. And I want Chantel. You can do us both a favor. Tell me where he is. We will get rid of him. Then the charming Lorraine will be all yours. It's as simple as that. Sorry, Garbeck. No deal. Well, they went to work on Rocky. They threw everything in the book and some things that weren't. Rocky held on. What he was waiting for was the boat whistle. And ten minutes later... You find all this amusing, Jordan? The smile on your face. Buster, you just missed the boat. The boat? I do not understand. Skip it. It's a long story. Do not go! Quick! The police! Sergeant! Cover the door! Swine! Stop! Enough! Enough! You have been very clever, Garbage. But it will take a man more clever than you to explain the counterfeiting equipment I have just found in the back room of this warehouse. Abdullah, Farid, take these two men away. I don't mind admitting, Greco, this is the first time I've been glad to see you. Make no mistake, Mr. Jordan. I'd rather hope that I was coming to apprehend you. You had a couple of your boys tailing me, hoping to pin something on me. Right, Greco? That is right. Because I could not believe that you had given the widow Harubin 50 pounds for nothing. She needed the money. That was reason enough, Greco. But you wouldn't understand that. Anyway, it turned out to be one of the best investments I ever made. Our star, George Raff, returns in just a moment. Tomorrow night, Paulette Goddard adds a generous touch of glamour to the dramatic proceedings over most of these same CBS stations. She plays the lead on the Broadway Playhouse production of Bachelor Mother. Later tonight, over most of these same CBS stations, the President of the United States will be heard on a full-hour CBS observance of the 175th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. In addition to the President's dedicatory address, delivered at the Washington Monument ground in the National Capitol, a host of noted personalities take part in this event, 
which touches off a full year of American rededication to the principles of American freedom and democracy. Tonight, on CBS. Now, here again is our star, Mr. George Raft. Thank you. Be sure you drop around next week at the same time for another story of adventure when we take you back to Cairo and the Cafe Tambourine. So until we meet again next week, Saida. George Raff stars as Rocky Jordan, Larry Dobkin as Chris. In tonight's cast were Gene Tatum, Doris Singleton, Lou Krugman, Paul Fries, Byron Kane, and Gerald Moore. Original music is composed and conducted by Richard Arant. Rocky Jordan is written by Adrian John Doe and Larry Roman, produced and directed by Cliff Howell. Bob Lamont speaking. This partially transcribed program came to you over CBS, where you hear the FBI in peace and war every Thursday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Lieutenant Greco, really? He got a promotion? I don't know. That may just be a cynical um, uh, concept on the nature of any organization. Uh, the idea that, yeah, this is the type that rises up. Now, mine, I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's, I don't know, the best rationale I can come up uh, with for that. This is a challenging episode to really talk about. And there are things I really want to avoid in uh, talking about this. Uh, where essentially, you know, Rocky Jordan with Jack Moyles was just a bang on series. You know, uh, Moyles have been doing it, you know, pretty much on and off, uh, for, you know, about five years. And there was so much to like about that approach. Uh, and I think that uh, what we've heard so far with uh, George Raff doesn't measure up to that. But I want to be clear, I don't think that this is bad or that Raft is bad in the role. Uh, but there are some things that just really don't seem to work about this particular uh, take. Uh, the, you know, and I think, you know, if you want to start small, I thought, you know, as I was listening to the opening, there were a lot of extra words, but it didn't really add anything to the episode other than time. And I really have to say that I don't like Chris narrating, uh, particularly events that he's not involved in. Uh, you know, a lot of these shows that, uh, were in the more hard-boiled genre. And I don't think, you know, Rocky Jordan is like 100% that. Uh, but one thing I think made them effective was the first-person narration. Uh, it's not always necessary, but uh, when you do have those dangerous situations happen... Uh, you really kind of feel it from their perspective. You hear it and you see it, you know, in your mind, and it's, it is kind of a visceral feeling, uh, which I think, I think does work for radio it, in drawing you into the action. Uh, the way this is done with a third person uh, narrator really distances you from the action. That said, as, uh, this is not the worst thing in the world. If we didn't have the Jack Moyles version and all we had were uh, the five episodes with George Raff, uh, this would be probably better liked than most of the shows that I end up playing on Tuesdays. So uh, that's uh, for what it's worth. Uh, now, I, I do want to let you know that we're actually coming to the end of Rocky Jordan. In four weeks, we will be revisiting a previously uncirculated episode of a series we've played before. 
Uh, and then uh, the week after that, we'll be getting into The Man Called X. So uh, plenty to look forward to uh, coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, now on to some listener comments and feedback. Beatrice writes in, Thank you for the pleasure I received from the old-time uh, detectives. I'm not a computer person, but my daughter has set up my iPod uh, for me. I listen at night and think of the times my brother and I would listen together. Again, thank you and keep up the good work. Well, thank you so much for your kind note, Beatrice. Glad to... Uh, to remind you of a treasured memory. Thanks so much for commenting and for your support. We have an email here from Doc. Uh, Doc uh, writes in and uh, he says, uh, Say it ain't so. I was so hurry, sorry to hear that you played the last of the Rocky Jordan series with Jack Moyles as Rocky. I have to admit that my first reaction to the series was Moyles was ripping off Rick, a.k.a. Humphrey Bogart. Very quickly, I came to realize that Moyles and Rocky Jordan was one of the best of the golden age of radio. Jay Novello was also uh, fantastic as Captain Sam Sabaya. Lou Krugman as uh, Sergeant Greco added the right amount of antagonists to provide uh, spice for the series. The multicultural intrigue of Cairo made a wonderful setting for the series. It was and is one of the reasons that the theater of the mind will always be superior to hundreds of mind-numbing programs shown on television today. I will be replaying the Moyles Rocky uh, Jordan episodes over a period of time. Thank you for making them available through your podcast. It is the best of the best. Well, thanks so much, Doc. I'm glad you uh, enjoyed the series, and I agree that this is really, uh, or I should say the Moyles run, definitely was a very solid series. Then uh, we have a comment here from Bill over on Facebook. Uh, Bill writes, I knew the end of the Jack Moyles era of Rocky Jordan was coming, but I didn't know uh, this episode was the last one. It was a good episode to go out on. It uh, might have been uh, just me, but I thought the character of Lent sounded a bit like uh, Peter Lorre, and Glander sounded a bit like Sidney Greenstreet. Plus, it was fitting that once again, uh, Dreco was trying to pin the crime on Rocky. The only downside was the use of an organ to play the theme instead of an orchestra. I was wondering if this was a reused script. It sounded uh, familiar. Thanks. Um, well, I think there might have been a similar plot. I uh, I don't believe that it was a reused script as far as I know, uh, because, yeah, this particular script title hadn't been used, and the plot's a little bit different. Uh, Eric uh, writes, wow, that organ changes the entire feel of the theme. It takes the epicness away. I will miss Rocky. I hope the remaining episodes keep the quality high. While they might have been relying a little too much on variations of Sam's right outside the door, lately it hasn't been overdone enough to kill the show. Well, thanks so much. I'd agree that is annoying. Uh, and I also uh, do agree about the theme uh, music. Um, I, I think that this is really best uh, played uh, without the organ. Uh, this particular theme I think works best that way. Over on Twitter, David writes, I won't lie, losing Jack Moyles as Rocky is tough. I might have to start this series over from the beginning. And Ian writes, I will miss the old Rocky. Well, thanks so much. And I appreciate your, appreciate your comments. Thank you for taking time to share. And that will be all today. I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Bruce, one of our Patreon supporters since April 2016 currently supporting us at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thank you for much for your support. All right, join us back here tomorrow for Boston Blackie. Next Wednesday, another episode of Rocky Jordan. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.